as we go about our daily lives, we know that there are, there are signs all over the place, some that we need to take very good notes of. I want to show you a sign in the Bible that you can decide if it's there for your own good or is it just there to spoil your fun. In the Bible is a verse that uh, it's in John's Gospel and it says, For this is how God loved the world. He gave his one and only son so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. Now is that a sign to take notice of or is it just there to spoil your fun? This is one of the most famous verses in the Bible and rightly so. That almighty God sent his one and only son into the world to die on a cross so that everyone who believes in him will be given eternal life. Do you know that you are an eternal being? Once conceived, people live forever and ever and ever and ever, either with God or separated from God. And God tells us that if you believe in Jesus, then your gift will be eternal life with him, with him. When it says God loved the world, he's not talking about the, the physical earth. He's not talking about the, uh, the, 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 the ground. He's not talking about the rivers and the mountains and the streams and the, and the trees and all the animals. He's talking about you. He's talking about God loved the people of the world so much that he gave his one and only son. And really what you should be doing in a verse like this is putting your name in it. Verse like this, you should be putting your name in it. So when it says God loved the world, put your name in it. God loved Steve so much that he gave his one and only son. So that when Steve believes in him, he will not perish but have eternal life. That makes a difference, doesn't it? That's fantastic. God loves Sarah so much that he gave his one and only son. And when Sarah believes in him, he shall not perish but have eternal life. Put your own name there for a moment. Just read the verse through and put your own name in the verse. It's beautiful, isn't it? It's beautiful. But the passage goes on to say, and this is the big warning. The passage goes on to say in the very next verse that God sent his son into the world, not to judge the world, but to save the world through him. There is no judgment against anyone who believes in him, that is Jesus, but anyone who does not believe in him has already been judged for not believing in God's one and only son. The key thing here is belief, isn't it? Believing in God's son. The thing is, how you are treated in this life matters to God. How I am treated in this life matters to God. And how the world itself is treated matters to God because God is a God of justice. God is a God of justice. We live in a world of justice and one day God who is the judge will judge the world. He's going to judge you and I. We all have an appointment with the judge of the world, God, and we're all going to keep it. We don't have the option of saying, sorry, I'm not going to turn up. On the day that we die, we'll stand before Almighty God. I don't know if you know, I don't know if you know, but tomorrow is the, the 30th anniversary, the 30th anniversary of the Hillsborough disaster. Do you remember that? Some of, some of those oldies remember it very, very well. When back in 1989, Liverpool were playing Nottingham Forest in Sheffield. I don't know why they weren't playing in Liverpool or in Nottingham, but the... Uh, Liverpool will play Nottingham Forest at Sheffield's Hillsborough ground and 96 Liverpool fans were crushed to death. It remains the worst sporting disaster in British history. There was a coroner's inquest two years later in 1991 and the coroner ruled that all of the, the deaths were accidental. Well, the families of those 96 people and indeed the entire city of Liverpool absolutely rejected that finding. They said, that's not true. 
That's not true. So a second coroner's inquest was held and they ruled that the supporters were unlawfully killed because of failures by the emergency services. They failed in their duty of care to the supporters. So when that ruling was done, justice was made. And that was such a relief to the families of Liverpool. There's something inside us that demands justice, isn't there? There's something de inside us that demands justice. How many times have we seen on, on, on the local news somebody walking out of court and saying, for that crime they did against my family member, they only got 18 months, that's not justice! And, and the, the hearts are breaking as they go home. Justice has not been done. But another time, somebody else may come out or come out of the, the courts and say, yes, they were jailed for life. And the judge said, life is going to mean life. Justice has been done. Now I can grieve properly and move forward in my life. There's something deep inside of all of us that says justice must be done. And we cannot rest until justice is done. Every, every five-year-old at school knows about justice when they come in at playtime and say... <coughs> Sir, he hit me! I, I used to be a, a primary school teacher in a former life. Sir, he hit me! And they'll not be settled until I reprimand the child who, who hit me. <laughs> Justice is deep inside of us. And you know what? God agrees with that. God is a God of justice. Almighty God, the righteous judge, is going to judge us all. And those who've rejected the Lord Jesus... The Bible says, actually, they would prefer it if mountains fell on them and covered them rather than face God without faith in Jesus, without believing in Jesus. That, that's what the Bible says. That, that's, that's massive, isn't it? That's a massive thing. We're at Easter time and we remember Easter is the death and resurrection of the Lord Jesus. Christmas is the time that we remember when he came. Jesus came to this earth because we have a problem. I wonder what kind of problems do you have in your life? Do you have problems in your marriage? Problems with your boss? Problems with paying the electricity bill? Or problems with your knees? We all have problems and we have different problems. The world is full of problems, but the biggest problem we face is not our marriages or lack of. It's not our knees or our boss or our finances. Our biggest problem is to do with the heart. Our biggest problem is to do with the heart. The Bible sums it up very well in a, a book called Romans. It was written by a man called Paul to his friends in the, the city of Rome. So it's Paul's letter to his friends in Rome, the Romans. And the Bible sums it up well when it says, For everyone has sinned. We all fall short of God's glorious standard. Yet God in his grace, at his kindness, freely makes us right in his sight. He did this through Jesus Christ when he freed us from the penalty for our sins. The Bible says that all of us have sinned. I think sin is a word that's still used in society today, but usually by the Sun newspaper. I hope you don't buy that. <laughs> It's, it's a, a word that we often find in the, in the, the, the sun. All of us, un we understand what the word sin means. Sin, well, a more common word is selfishness. Selfishness. God's standard is perfection. Anybody reaching that today? It's only just after 11 o'clock and I've, I've failed on a dozen counts or more. I'm, I'm far, far from perfect in my daily life and far from perfect in even today. God's standard is perfection and I've failed already. If you're honest, you will admit that you're probably more selfish than you'd like to be. I certainly am. And because of that, because of our selfishness, we can never have a right relationship with God. Our Selfishness separates us from God. But God, in his loving mercy, sent Jesus. God, in his loving mercy, sent Jesus because God loves you. 
and he wants you to be back in a relationship with him. So Jesus came, we'll remember that at Christmas, Jesus came on a mission. And his mission was to die on the cross. He wasn't in the wrong place at the, at the wrong time. Jesus came with a mission, of very deliberately go to the capital city of his nation, Jerusalem, where he was arrested and killed on the cross. And God has promised that whoever believes in Jesus will not perish, but have the gift of eternal life through believing that when Jesus died on the cross, it wasn't for anything that any selfishness that, that he had in his self, because there was none. He died in your place. And he took the punishment for your selfishness. So that there's, on the day of judgment, when God looks at all the list of the, of the things that you've messed up with, even today, he takes a big rubber stamp and he says, Paid in full. Paid in full by Jesus on the cross. Jesus willingly went to the cross to take the punishment for the, the, the sins that you've committed. All paid in full by Jesus. That's wonderful. It really is. Rio Ferdinand. Rio Ferdinand, he was the the former Manchester United player and England footballer. He wrote his autobiography. And in it, he describes how his wife died of cancer at the age of 34, 35. There's a section in his book where he, he describes that his wife Rebecca is in hospital and she grew close to the nursing staff who were very, very kind to her. But one day a counsellor came in to visit her to give her some support. It was a young lady, clearly fresh from college. Tell me this, said Rebecca closely. Have you ever lost somebody close to you? No, I haven't, said the young lady. But I have been well trained. Without another word, Rebecca turned to face the wall. Don't let her near our kids. What on earth does she know? She's never had to live through anything like this. What a waste of time. The counsellor could not really help because she had, could not empathise she could sympathise, feel sorry for Rebecca and the family, but she couldn't empathise. She couldn't say, yeah, I've been there. I've been there. Jesus is different. Jesus is so very different from that counsellor. Jesus knows what it is to suffer. He knows the way that you have suffered. He suffered emotionally, emotionally when his friends betrayed him. He suffered physically. He knows what it is to, to, be, to be spat at. He was whipped until his back bled. He had a crown of thorns thrust upon his nails. He had nails hammered through his wrists and his feet. And he was left to hang naked in public where his mother watched him die. Jesus knows what it is to suffer. He knows how you are suffering. He knows all the emotional turmoil that you go through in the ups and downs of this world. And that also is at the heart of Easter, that Jesus knows the road that you are walking even now and he cares and he is able to help you because he is the son of God, he is God. And he is there and able to help you. He's powerful enough to be able to help you. He loves you enough to want to help you. Going back to our opening Bible reading. For this is how God loved you. He gave his one and only son so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. On your day of judgment, God's going to ask you, why should I let you come into heaven? And if you say, it's because I did, because I've been respectable, because I've been 
Uh, I've been generous because I've been a good parent. I've been a good ch child to my, my, my parents. I've been uh, kind to me granny. I helped little old ladies across the, the road. I, I, I'm not perfect, but you should see that guy at work. Whoa, I'm, I'm not that bad. If you say any of those things that, why, why should I let you into heaven? It's because I've, God's not interested. He's absolutely not interested in anything you've done. What he wants to know is, have you believed? Have you believed in Jesus on the, your day of judgment? God wants to know if you've believed in Jesus Christ. And this goes back to our opening question. What's so good about Good Friday? Good Friday is the day that Jesus went to the cross in your place, taking your punishment so that you could be free forever and enjoy eternal life with him. Good Friday is good for you if you believe that you've messed up. Messed up in the way that you treat other people. Messed up in the way that you relate to God. And therefore deserve God's judgment. But in his loving mercy, God gave the Lord Jesus to go to the cross as an innocent man and take your punishment so that God's anger against you is dead. It's finished. It's over. Good Friday is good because all the rottenness and selfishness in your life is transferred to Jesus and all of his perfection, the big word in the Bible says righteousness, all of his perfection is transferred to you. Good Friday is good because the Lord Jesus Christ, God's Son, laid down his life for you because he loves you so very, very much. Well, in closing, our regulars will be amazed to hear me say that so early. In closing, how should you respond? Well, the Bible asks you to believe in Jesus. So, so, so do it. Do it. Believe in Jesus. Nothing else is required. Absolutely nothing else is required. God is a God of fresh starts and he wants to give you a fresh start today. Believe in your heart that God loves you passionately. You don't have to understand everything, but believe that God loves you passionately. And so, believe in Jesus and you will be given that wonderful, glorious reward of eternal life perfect peace perfect joy and get this perfect rest oh how glorious perfect rest through a simple faith in jesus and that is available to you today today is a day of salvation the bible says today is a day of good news for you if you believe in jesus